Good evening. The singing is beautiful tonight, and uh, as was prayed earlier, we sure do appreciate our song leaders. Thank you all so much for leading us as we praise God. <clears throat> if you'd like, turn over to uh, Luke chapter 9. Luke chapter 9, we looked at this passage this morning. We're going to look at it again tonight. <clears throat> this morning, we passed out some yellow cards. If you weren't here or if you were here and, and didn't get one, they are sitting on, the ones that are left over are sitting outside in the foyer on those tables. And uh, there's several uh, stacks of them so that you don't have to miss out on the blessing of uh, stepping out of your comfort zone. We want to encourage everyone to take one of those cards and uh, put into action the things that are, are found on there. Did the guys up in the booth, did y'all see the slide that I, I put in there for the invitation? Well, check it out. There's a slide that'll have a, a poll and have the answer from our poll from the U version this morning. In Galatians chapter 2 and verse 20, it says, I have been crucified with Christ. It's no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Now, of course, Paul is inspired by the Holy Spirit to say these things, that he's been crucified with Christ, that it's no longer he uh, that's living, but, but Christ who lives in him, and how that uh, the life that he now lives, even though it's here in the flesh and, and in this world, he's going to live by faith. Of course, our lesson this morning talked about the faith that, that Jesus describes in the Beatitudes, a, a faith that recognizes that blessings are just on the other side of our comfort zone. And so as we considered that this morning, and we, of course, remember in Luke chapter 9 there, Jesus' words when he said, if anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. He says, for whoever desires to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake will save it. For what advantage is it to a man if he gains the whole world and is himself destroyed or lost? We have a challenge before us. And I hope that as this morning we looked at that challenge and considered uh, the idea of walking by faith rather than by sight, uh, that tonight also uh, we can uh, pursue after a faith that is a, a biblical faith, a faith that really is grounded in what Christ is saying here when he tells us to deny ourselves. Rather than comforting ourselves and rather than uh, enjoying all the comforts that we have, uh, stepping out outside of that comfort, outside of that comfort zone, and uh, reaching out to other people to affect them in their lives in a way that will bring glory and honor to God. So do we have that slide, guys? <clears throat> well, what I wanted to share with you about it uh, was the fact that in our poll this morning, we had uh, the answers that were given, and I know that every single person didn't participate in the poll because everybody doesn't do the U version on their smartphones, but uh, the ones who did, out of the ones who did, uh, the, we had several things, and they are the very things that are listed on the cards in, in encouragement for us to uh, do this week as we step out of our comfort zone. The number one answer that was uh, given by everyone who said that it was what made them feel most out of their comfort zone was actually visiting those who can't get out and come to the services themselves. I think it was about 56%. <clears throat> and so a large portion of us uh, felt like uh, going and, and visiting someone. And, and, and you know, in our culture, uh, we, uh, we click rather than, and, and, we, and we surf the net rather than uh, actually going to homes and knocking on doors many times. Rather than sitting down together, we uh, chat instead online uh, or, or maybe text. And, and so I can see why that would be one that we would struggle with more so today than maybe 10 years ago or 15 years ago or, or further back than that. But I would encourage us all to recognize the need for us to be face-to-face -face and, and for us to encourage those who can't come and, and enjoy the encouragement that we have here. So I'd encourage you, step out of your comfort zone and recognize this is a congregational need. This is a congregational struggle. You're not alone in the fact that you're not super excited about knocking on someone's door. And don't forget, you could text before you knocked on the door. You, know? you could give a call before you go and knock on that door. And so I want to encourage you to do that. Um, <clears throat> the, uh, the next one, I was hoping the slide would come up. Is that not going to happen? Not going to happen. 
Okay. <laughs> uh, the other one uh, most answered was to ask someone to have a Bible study. Now, I would remind you that you don't have to ask someone who doesn't believe in God at all <laughs> to a Bible study, you know? It, it could be just someone sitting in this room, someone right beside you, and, and just say, hey, let's study this passage together and enjoy a time of, of mutual growth uh, as you consider what the Bible says and, and challenge one another uh, to putting those things uh, to practice in your life. Look at there, 24% asking someone to study the Bible with us. Uh, and then we had two that tied at 12%, inviting a friend to church and getting someone groceries. Both of those, uh, uh, you know, I guess in third place of things that we're most uncomfortable with. And, uh, and then I was really excited, and Kelly especially was really excited, that no one is in, out of their comfort zone when it comes to Meals on Wheels. I'm really excited about that. And so uh, we really hope that uh, we'll have more who will volunteer for that. Remember, it's during your lunchtime anyway, and, and uh, it really doesn't take much time at all, and it's a huge blessing to the people who you deliver meals to. So really excited about having more people uh, sign up for Meals on Wheels and, uh, and participating in that ministry. Anyway, I just thought that it was very interesting and something that maybe as a, a church family we could look at and say, you know what, we've got strengths, we've definitely got weaknesses, but there's things that we can build on. And together, as we try to uh, deny ourselves and take up his cross daily, as we strive to have a faith like Paul's, like he talked about in Galatians 2.20, uh, that it's no longer I who lives, but Christ who lives in me, then let's take up those, those challenges. And, and let's step out of that comfort zone. Pick up one of those yellow cards out there. and Remember, uh, the, the wonderful things that you can do for others, they don't start and end on those yellow cards. Come up with your own and go and do those things that bring a blessing into someone's life and make sure that the glory all goes to God. Make sure that he's the one who they know you're doing it for and because of. That's my encouragement to you tonight. Maybe you're here tonight and, and you haven't put your faith in Jesus Christ. Maybe you haven't uh, allowed your sins to be washed away from you and, and turn, turn your life over to Christ in the saving uh, grace that he has, that he has reached out to all mankind with in his death, burial, and resurrection, you can obey his gospel. You can uh, turn to him for salvation and live a, uh, the rest of your life in the hope of an eternal heaven in the presence of God if you'll submit to that gospel. He tells us uh, that once we've heard and, and faith has developed in our heart when we believe that he is the son of God, that uh, we should repent, that we should stop doing those things that take us away from God and start doing those things that bring us closer to him, that we should confess that he is the son of God before other people, uh, that we should be immersed for the forgiveness of our sins and that we should then live faithfully thereafter. So I wanna encourage you to do that. And if you have done that, but uh, maybe some things have come up, maybe some things have gotten in between you and the God who loves you so much, just get rid of those things. Do whatever it takes to make sure you're walking there with God. Make sure that you're uh, stepping out of your comfort zone and living a faith that is uh, a faith that you can read about in the Bible, a faith that makes a difference in the people and the world around you. Bring glory and honor to the name of God. Whatever your need is, won't you come while we stand and we sing this song? Take me to your door this day, I will serve no other God, Lord, I'm here to stay, for you have paid the price for me with your blood you ransom me now I will serve you eternally a free man I'll never be so pierce my ear, Lord my God, take me to your door this day, I will serve no 
able to partake of the Lord's Supper this morning. It's been prepared in the library and you may go there now or during the singing of this last song and you'll be served. Before our announcements and our closing prayer, we'll sing number 712. Jesus is coming soon. Number 712. <clears throat> Troublesome times are here, filling men's hearts with fear. Freedom we all here now is at stake. Humbling your heart to God, saves from the chastening rod. Seek the way pilgrims trod, Christians awake. Jesus is coming soon, morning or night. <laughs> Till surely some, all of the dead shall rise. Righteous meet in the skies, going where no one dies, heavenward bound. Troubles will soon be o'er, happy forevermore. When we meet on that shore, free from all care. Rising up in the sky, telling this world goodbye. Homeward we then will fly, glory to share. Jesus is coming soon, morning or night or noon. Many will meet their doom, trumpets will sound. All of the dead shall rise, righteous meet in the skies. Going where no one dies, heavenward bound.